Uh, this next talk is of particular interest to me because I'm a sponsor. And also because this happens to be an area that I'm interested in in terms of research. Uh, I'm very interested in how do you make engineering more accessible to a wider spectrum of students, uh, more non-traditional students. And one of the things that has already been a stumbling block to that is for people who are non-traditional to be able to take labs, to take PE labs, but have families and jobs and can't come to campus to work in the lab. So I've been fascinated with the idea of how do you do a lab in the So uh, I charged the team, uh, Travis, Tim, and Nat, uh, with the idea of coming up with a remote Randy Kahn, Randy, Randy sir, uh, was your advisor, and with that, I will turn it over to the team. Thank you, guys. Okay. <laughs> so our project is the remote e lab systems, and Tim Tang, uh, project manager at Harvard Design, along with Travis Lee, and our software designer was Matt. So today I'll be covering our motivation and intro to our product along with the hardware aspects of it. And that will go over software aspects of the project and Travis will finish with results and reflections. So we, our goal was to replicate lab experiments and have students be able to remotely log in uh, through the school uh, computer which has our product picked up so that they could perform lab experiments remotely. Uh, this, so we integrate all lab bench equipment into one device and have it interface through a computer. The, our motivation was so that students could, uh, students could perform lab experiments and, and analyze them without any equipment uh, except internet access. And so that would reduce the commute. Um, they could learn at their own pace, and with the limited lab access of the school, could, they can do it whenever they get the chance. And another motivation was to give back to the school and directly impact the EU curriculum. So this is our motherboard diagram. It interfaces a uh, host PC with connected uh, connect through a single USB which control uh, all the instrumentation. Uh, this includes the function generator and oscilloscope for analog signals and a digital screen logic analyzer for digital circuits. And that connects to a daughter board, which is uh, the uh, it, it replicates uh, lab experiments that students may need to analyze. So, the motherboard connects to the dot board through 160 pins right in the center, and it goes on top of, they stack on top of each other with pin headers. Uh, the motherboard itself contains a power regulator, so the power supply uh, is regulated down to a level that our integrated circuits in the labs can use. Uh, it contains an Arduino Mega for to control digital logic levels, such as and oscilloscope in network. So it's controlling our relay and can switch our oscilloscope game from one, one game or 10 game. And it, it also controls our digital to an analog converter to uh, bias ICs with various voltages. So our key component is the power supply, which supplies us with 15 volts, uh, plus or minus 15 volts, and it's stepped down so that our circuits can use them. Our, we have a two-in-one function generator and a two-channel oscilloscope so that a function generator can generate a signal for the circuit and then it can be read back through the scopes. And the logic analyzer, which is a faster, uh, can analyze fast digital circuits so with various trigger uh, capabilities. So, our, uh, so from, from our motherboard, the our, our microcontroller controls multiplexers 
which switch uh, the oscilloscope points, resistor values, capacitor values, and then that goes back to our oscilloscope uh, to be red, uh, so we can see the output. And uh, so we have various boards that can be mounted, and they have all have unique identifiers. So in software, it will, it will know which board is plugged in and correct the values for the logic uh, corresponding to that experiment. Our first daughter board is a uh, dual stage gain circuit. The first, uh, it takes an input and uh, the first stage outputs it, uh, amplifies it by 20. And the second stage is gain that is dependent on this resistor. And we have it going from 0 to 10K. And depending on the value, the output gain. Um, and what's interesting about this is that for values less than 5k or 5,000, it is non-inverting, and for values above 5,000, it becomes inverting. Um, so yeah, the multiplexers replace this um, variable resistor by uh, we have a network of uh, resistors going to the multiplexer, and it kind of selects which resistor is actually connected to our circuit. And we also have a relay connected to this resistor so that when it's open, it simulates an open fault such as uh, R3 is not connected to our system. Our second experiment is a lab where you build your own basic selling key filter that's a low pass filter for 1000 hertz. Um, so we have uh, multiplexers replacing every resistor value and capacitor value. And so in the lab, there's a, there, the students are limited by what capacitor values more, than, more so than resistor values. So we, we added capacitor values that were easily uh, found. And then we selected resistor values so that corresponding to those capacitor values so that we get a 1,000 hertz cutoff. And the multiplexers themselves are unideal and at about 180 ohms. So the resistor values are compensated for that so that we still have the one kilohertz uh, cutoff frequency. And I'll pass it now to Nat for our software. software. Okay. So in this slide, you can see the general overview of our, our system. So uh, going from the top of the top bar, you can see You can see that the, the users who went from a uh, uh, location government uh, governs the whole system. And it, it sends a uh, serial port messages back and forth with our uh, uh, Linux magnet, which in turn controls all the peripheral uh, game uh, simulation and all the test ports. Then we'll cover the software in great in more, more detail. So the Linux form application uh, is designed for users to change uh, different com uh, component uh, values on the boards, uh, such as different resistors, capacitors, or any other component that might be required by a specific lab. Um, they, 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 uh, they can also enable or disable uh, different parts of, uh, of, the, of the different relays. And just to illustrate how this does the works, we'll cover a brief example. So when the user is ready to, uh, to check his or her results, the, the system is going to generate a, a serial message, which, is, which starts with the new port identifier, and followed by uh, two multiplexers, which actually are uh, located on the dark board. At this stage, the Arduino is going to receive the message, and uh, using the unique port identifier, is is going to locate the, the hardware and software recipient of this specific message. Um, uh, once, once done that, it's going to, in, in this specific example, it's going to set the, the, the device 1 state to 1, and device 2 state to 5. These numbers are completely arbitrary, and they may depend on, uh, on specific configuration of each port. So let's say you have multi uh, multiplexer with one of the 
those values. The number is going to go from uh, 0 to 19. They can also symbolize uh, on off switches for uh, different, uh, different uh, ripple in uh, instrumentations. Um, we also included um, uh, uh, we, we also included few troubleshooting messages so the, the, the users can get manually set the, the power and uh, troubleshoot all the EN instrumentation with the external, the external devices. For our private users interface, we, we aim for some simplicity uh, and really made most design. Um, so here's the uh, working area for each EN in the report. You can see uh, you can set different uh, oscilloscopes uh, positions. In this case, you can place uh, channel one or channel two oscilloscope at uh, A, B, uh, C, and D. You can also change the gain from one to the next. And each lab comes with a uh, gain with in the, in the individual tab. Uh, each tab also contains uh, a unique label of which signifies the 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 board. Is actually being in uh, in uh, use or not? Uh, we also used an interactive feedback system. So let's say you can see if the sent data button is actually called in uh, yeah, yeah, in orange, which means that the system the system has acknowledged the user's input, but it has not sent data to our uh, at this point. Uh, once the data is sent, the caller is going to return to light blue. And if the message is not successful, it's going to stay as uh, plain orange, and it's going to issue an advisory message uh, for the user and for the lab tech uh, to to in a, to in a uh, form that there's there might be something going on. Uh, this Windows form application can be summarized in a uh, few simple steps. Um, when the software starts, immediately it's going to check which board is. Uh, like which dartboard is going to is plugged into uh, to the motherboard. If there's nothing uh, nothing plugged in, it's going it's going to immediately issue an uh, the advisory message to the user and to the like whoever have a happens to be in 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 charge of of lab at that point. If the check passes uh, successfully, uh, it will take the user input and generate a serial message. Uh, we actually embedded a uh, redundancy check for the message itself. So suppose you uh, you change the values for port one, but you have port one put uh, in at, at the same uh, same uh, same time. What it, what it's going to do is it's going to actually interrupt the message, uh, disregard all the data, and uh, switch the user to to the second port. Uh, from our Windows form application. Uh, you can use these two buttons to to to, uh, to enable uh, to enable uh, digital and analog and analog uh, different systems, uh, na uh, namely one being a logic board an uh, analyzer and the development source code and function generator. And I'll let Travis cover their thoughts. Uh, so now we're going to take a look at our final product. Um, it was we have the orange chassis, which is designed using AutoCAD and printed using our maker box upstairs in the lab. Uh, we have our top view, which has our components inside and the mounted daughter board on top. We have slits on the side for better air ventilation. And on this front side view, we have the USB port, which connects to the computer, which makes the whole point uh, remote so that students can use this device. And then we have our power outlet that powers our system. So some results for our daughter board too. Uh, our remote EE lab provides accurate waveforms and data for analysis. We have our remote EE lab waveform, which is what the user would see when they're using our device. And on the right is our lab bench waveform, which we're all, which the EE are used to using the oscilloscopes in the lab. Um, they appear to be different, but this is because they're on a different time scale, but they're actually identical um, waveforms. So we collected data uh, using our prototype and compare that with those of the lab edge to make sure we were getting accurate readings and that our device was functioning the, the way it would or was intended to. Um, in the red we have our prototype data and in this lab we were to uh, monitor the gain and phase behavior with relation to the change in frequency and as you can see for both these uh, plots that our data is pretty similar to those in the lab edge. 
so there's going to be most likely to be a next phase for the future capstone groups. Uh, we've made two dollar boards for EE233, and we would like them to finish up the 233 before moving on to other classes such as 331, 332, or 425 that can use our prototype. Um, we would like to expand on the motherboard design, uh, design because we have only one dollar board mounted right now. So each time someone would want to use a different lab experiment, they would have to take it out and put a new one on. Um, if you could have one out up to three, then you could maybe interchange them when you're, if you want to use a different lab, two per se. Uh, we'd also like to allow more students to use the remote e lab system. Right now we have one prototype, so only one student would be able to use it. Um, if they could expand on the software, and maybe have multiple users at once or produce more prototypes. So you can have maybe four to five uh, lab stations for students to use. So some reflection on this overall project. Uh, we experienced the full cycle of the product development from a proof of concept to what we have now, which there's a lot of knowledge to be, that we learned. Uh, we also gained knowledge of the hardware and software interface. Um, we learned KiCad and PCB designing. We improved our time management skills. We learned to anticipate problems that may occur. And something with, that we look back to now is that we should have asked for help earlier because there's a lot of knowledgeable people that help us, such as our professors. Um, but we gained a lot of experience working in a professional environment, creating professional documentation, such as specification sheets, uh, organized meetings and discussions each week with our industry sponsor, uh, Randy. And we developed hands-on skills, such as soldering and using the yeah, we'd just like to thank our uh, faculty advisor, Dr. Randy Kong, for sticking with us for these past three quarters. Um, our industry sponsor, Dr. Arvind Berger, for giving us this project and giving us tips and advice when we needed it. Um, Cameron Whalen, our friend who's a mechanical engineering, helped us uh, with the design of the chassis and using the 3D printer. Um, Jared Lee for helping us with our PCB design problems, and Cole Perval for just helping us whenever we needed it and helping us get out the materials. So what we would do, we would set uh, our data pins A, B, and Z below. Uh, then we would in, 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 in incrementally go in, like, in a binary fashion, like 0, 0, 1, 0, uh, zero, one, zero uh, so on and so forth. And uh, in this configuration, we can, use, we can uh, target uh, 12 different multiplexions at the same time. We might actually expand this number with the ship, uh, ship, uh, ship the pressures key eventually. So is the register capacity going through? I mean, is, it, is, it adding, is it adding resistance and capacity to it? Yes. Uh, you're counting your problem for that? Yes. It adds 160 on when we use a dual power for the uh, multi-factor. The number increases to 270 ohms when you use a uh, uh, full uh, power supply. So essentially, it's acting like a on on uh, off switch, so to so, speak. I mean, did you consider just using simple solid state converters or anything? Uh, that would take uh, perhaps a port, uh, port space, and uh, we actually use relays for the power supplies. Uh, Kim actually knows more uh, more about this. Right. Um. So, yeah, like you said, it would take a lot of more space, and it it would. In the, our, our lab experiment circuits, they're not that um, sensitive to that extra resistance, and since we are, we have, we're adding resistors to it, we can just lower the resistor. We thought that would, would be the easier way. So, so because we have a, the, the, the 
the binary system, the 0, 0, 1 that's talking about, instead of having eight pins or to control eight relays, we'd only have to read that can control eight. And then when you compare it to the bench, what what was causing what why would the exact that's what we were talking about. No, but a slight difference on I mean, the phase and the um, that's probably the multiplexer we so we we can do some fine tuning to get a similar but we just haven't gotten that so uh to be exact should they be a depth? In principle, should they be a depth? If you're comparing uh, development is actually a three hundred dollar PC oscilloscope compared to a three thousand dollar tech oscilloscope with properly compensated probes. Oh, okay. So you're not going to use the same diagnostic. Right? It's not through the app to app to app. No. The component components is may have been a good uh, trigger as well. Because um, I think the clusters and the regulations evolving in the in, 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 in lab already like for 5%. Uh, five
they actually do 25% better in, in terms of comprehension than the, than the male counterparts who only work on it in the lab. So you know, I, I saw uh, an opportunity there to extend the, uh, the reach of our program to something like this. So this, this is the first real step we have of access to the market. But again, your point about debugging, you can think very similar uh, things like uh, students in automotive technology often have exams where they have a car with a whole bunch of problems and they have to fix them all. But we can certainly design the problems into these boards. I think the only difference is that usually the students, when they have a mistake on the board, um, they, they start out actually not believing they have a mistake. <laughs> Whereas I think if you tell them there is a mistake, you know, then yeah, you got to just find a you know, pre set up experiment. It's a little different experience. But I, I think that's very, very cool. I'm just, I, I, I'm, I'm just curious to think about how, how the experience differs. Because it probably will be a little different experience than being in the market. Yeah, I, I think you can ask, it, it's a valid question to ask, why not just do a lab view or a you know, robotic view? Um, I don't know. You know, I think there's a value to knowing that there's real hard work. Yeah. yeah, it seems to me that where it has the most, would be from most of the time, is low cost harder. You could let somebody take a phone with them. Mm -hmm. Other questions? I just wanted to add is that I actually uh, I bought my own like lab pretty much. Uh, it's, it's a cheap, uh, cheaper equipment, but um, when I was able to sit at home and actually like really figure out how the stuff works and not have to worry about being in the dark years of lab, I uh, I actually found that I I was a lot more productive and I actually understand the circuits and really get down to it. So I, I think it's a great idea. Other questions? If not, thank you. I was just going to say, I had a comment there. I really like your guys' speed and talks. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the last part of this session is a basic part of the platform uh, sponsored by. And uh, in fact, the advisors will go out and the team is half the dam, the rat guy, Hung Bui, and Emperor Art Arsenal. Uh, 
uh, especially after seeing these um, already run uh, projects in real life. But our goals today will be to uh, give you more uh, detailed uh, explanations. Hi everyone, I'm Kieran. Um, so our aim for the part of the project is to be able to be a quad of that can um, try in their administration position. Um, so we write we first we assemble um, the parts such as um, frame, motor, ESC, and propeller. And next we um, write Arduino code to spin and control the speed of the motor, the first motor, and then the rest of the four motor. Um, also, we um, we add or we we go to new sensor, um, go to new sensor data to send information to Arduino and just to, um, to tell where the um, the speed side which side to and we can um, change the speed from that. Um, we plan to um, design a that can be um, that, that can be that can be used for another team. They can um, they can do um, additional work or um, upgrading and so on. Also, we we design a um, we design a PCB that has both a regulator and um, right control circuit. Um, one of the major components that we um, we need to be a factor is a um, rustler DC motor, which is called BLDC, and it is um, constructed on um, permanent magnet and um, router and a um, wire wound on serif pole. One of the, the most used um, methods to control the speed um, of the motor is using um, PWM, which is power speed um, regulation. Um, it is the um, process of switching um, power of of a device on and off, um, and then uh, it is referred to um, the recycle, which is 10 percent, 10 percent. The other major component is um, an electronic speed controller, which is ESC, and it is a um, electric core circuit that purpose to vary the speed of the motor and act like a brake. It also controls each phase of the motor by sending sequence data, sequence of signal or rotation. The motor drives system is of three um, bridge, three eight bridge, get drive which is um, um, the transistor. And this which side can be turned on at the same time, otherwise it will burn the motor. Um, the other major component is propeller. Uh, you can see the picture um, quite often it uh, Two counterclockwise and clockwise. There are major um, three simple measurements that you need to adjust. Um, one, the first one is the length, and um, which is given in inch, and the second one is um, prop pitch, which refers to the amount of um, travel per revolution and the bore region which is the hole of the center of the prop. And how far do we take over the center? Thank you, Jeff, and thank God for the good slide. So, so for our, yeah, in this project, we use um, MPU 6 speed 50, or also known as the same exit sensor, uh, to send the data from the from the send data to the Arduino loop. And same exit sensor is the combination of uh, three axis uh, three axis accelerometer and uh, three axis gy gyroscope. And we use this to detect the angle of the core structure to maintain the power or to move forward. And I can see these two pictures here. So the first example over right here is when the uh, when this MPU60 put on the level ground. So we if you detect the uh, the uh, zero uh, meter per second square and and also the for the z-axis it will be the gravity on the earth. And when you finally turn the bit, so it can be uh, two point two uh, meter per second square. And if you turn to the other direction, you know, read the other data, and this z can change too. And this is uh, what is the level for the MPU sixty fifty or the six axis sensor. And that is our platform design. So we we um, design this uh, Arduino this. Board right here, the P is PC board right here that put on the top of the Arduino do, which is the, or we can just say that it is the Arduino stage. 
And this fiber here is made of the carbon fiber, which is very light and strong. And it is very suitable for uh, our design. And this motor, this BL received motor or brushless motor is uh, one four bm uh, per volt. And this, yeah. Uh, so this power, uh, uh, this power converter powered by uh, this three uh, three cell uh, light light bulb battery, and it, it power is uh, electrostatic controller, so that electric electronic controller can control the motor. So this is overall design. So like I said uh, from the previous slide, so we use the Arduino two for um, as the brain to control uh, to read the same axis sensor, and then. Uh, it write it write the signal to the ESC to control the speed of the motor, and the six cell battery uh, we use it to power the uh, do do and also the uh, the motor. And so for our project, we had two options. Uh, we had made made it as the two options. The first option is to make it uh, autonomously fly, and the second option we use the red joe and the three transmitter uh, to control the, to use, use the uh, frequency to control the uh, speed of motor. And this is our wiring diagram. So this is the voltage regulator and this is the, the power that uh, goes through the, the LiPo battery and goes through to HPSC and this has a new one you can see in this clear here. Um, yeah, this, this two is for power, from power power from the battery and this four uh, terminal block is for the, the ESC, and this this uh, hole right here is for the signal that goes to uh, the motor, and this is uh, the voltage regulator and MC17 and potentiometer that uh, can control the range of the voltage for the, to power the board. And this last part hole uh, hole right here is for um, the second sensor that we can put on the top of this. Thing. And I'm going to explain the one uh, that's on the top. So uh, we were able to write the software code group to make the motor spin by ourselves. Uh, we tried to implement the uh, CSS sensor when the program, but uh, unfortunately we put it out how that we couldn't make it work. Um, to conclusion of so all the work we achieved, we were able to uh, spin all the four motors. We uh, could be able to um, control the speed of the four motors and the fly. We also um, made the platform of the quadcopter, and the quadcopter is um, able to operate and uh, available for all students to uh, study. Also, we designed a PCB that have voltage regulators that connected to uh, fly control circuit. Um, I would like to say thank you to uh, Nicole Hamilton for sponsor and uh, for advisor and sponsor. I would say thank you to Guy for the uh, lab tech for helping us with PCB design. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
powerful, like powerful enough to live alone and also to carry some more weight. Do you, do you have the, the video for see it out there on the football field in front of the North Creek Event Center and it was kind of a good stiff breeze that was going and it adjusted quite well and it really kind of got up there in height and everything so it was just amazing how it was all balanced or was it another one that I saw? Or? That one we, we bought it just to test it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Never mind that.